Meanwhile, um, it might seem, and if you watched the match yesterday between uh, uh, England and Italy, that England have found a new talisman, somebody to perhaps really galvanize the squad for everyone to pull together around, for the manager, the head coach to build the team around and to potentially uh, have a true superstar for several years to come. Paul Merson says Jude Bellingham is England's X Factor and it insists it is time for Gareth Southgate's side to end the country's wait for silverware and win Euro 2024. England produced a scintillating comeback to beat Italy 3-1 at Wembley and secured their place at Euro 2024. Gareth Southgate's side, needing only a point to qualify for next summer's tournament, fell behind to Gianluca Scamacca's early opener, but captain Harry Kane led the response, converting a penalty, then scoring a clinical second after a breakaway strike from Marcus Rashford. England were again uh, indebted to Kane's goal-scoring heroics as he took his international tally to 61. But Jude Bellingham was the real star, winning the penalty for the equaliser, then producing a sensational burst of pace to set up Rashford for the second. The 20-year-old received a standing ovation when he was substituted in the closing stages, with Southgate saying afterwards, his mentality is incredible to show such maturity and humility at such a young age. We're lucky to have him, end quote. Merson has now lauded Bellingham's performance and his display so far this season for Real Madrid and England. Saying he is years ahead of his time, he also believes England's players are now the envy of the world and thinks Southgate's side must now end their long wait for silverware starting at Euro 2024 next summer. We've, I think pretty much everyone who is not British has said in the past that um, English players are overhyped. Um, English, the English national team is overhyped. Is this just more of the uh, overhype? going on with Bellingham and what England can now achieve. Before the summer, or during the summer transfer window for 2023, there was this talk about, okay, PSG are calling out it's Mbappe. Can Mbappe make the move now mm -hmm. and save Real Madrid from the void that a certain Karim Benzema had created when they moved to the Saudi Pro League? And everybody was talking about, oh, if it's not Mbappe, it's Harry Kane. If it's not Harry Kane, it's probably Victor Simen. They need a number nine to get them the goals mm. to complement um, Vinicius Jr. and probably bring in every other attacker into the field. None of this worked out. They eventually brought Joselu, also a striker. Then, 100 million was spent on a midfielder from Borussia Dortmund, who happens to be an English player. All of a sudden, what was expected from Mbappe, Arikin, Victor Sime, and any other striker I can think of in this world, Jubelium is giving it to you. Mm. Let's not forget, this is the same team that I'm missing to go Potua, arguably one of the best goalkeepers in the world at the moment, missing one of the best defenders in the world at the moment, Elder um, Militao, missing their former striker Benzema. Vinicius Jr. was out early in the season. And Real Madrid went on five or six winning streak. Mm -hmm. Bellingham scoring in every game. At the moment, Bellingham has played in three leagues or three different platforms for Real Madrid. The DFP Poker, mm -hmm. the La Liga, and the Champions League. He has scored in three, in three of them. In all competitions, he has 12 goals in 14 games. Mm -hmm. And he has an assist in, three, in those three leagues as well. So if it is overhyped, probably we have a different definition of overhype because Real Madrid, who we can say is also arguably the biggest club in the world, mm. there is a player in their midst who is 20 years old. Mm. Um, he was the former captain of his former side at the age of 20. I, I don't know if you saw his assist for Rashford yesterday. Yeah. Before the assist, but, um, England were on the receiving end. I think it was on a corner or something. Then there was an interception. And Jubelia was the first to react. Mm -hmm. 
he took the ball over the first uh, line of defense from Italy, and that was between Rashford and Rebellia. Took a little run, laid off the pass to Rashford, who eventually scored. And you could see deliberation. He even celebrated like he was the one who scored. Again, I think we have to redefine what we call overhype. Okay, because but, but Jude, with, Jude Bellingham, his talent is not in doubt. The issue here, the question that needs to be asked is, as good as he is at such a young age, is he a talismanic player? Is he the kind of player that can carry a team on his shoulders? Is he the kind of team that a manager can build around and expect that everybody else will take their cue from and therefore the team will succeed because these are early times this is still very early in the season we haven't gone to january yet and in spain you know it's a two horse race most seasons so when real madrid are doing well real madrid are expected to do well and if they were choosing to play Joselu and he was scoring, Giuselu would be in a position where he would be surrounded by so much talent that he, if he didn't score, it would mean that he wasn't good enough at, at that level at the very least. Jude Bellingham is obviously a player that has been, um, has been um, labeled as somebody that would go very far and do very great things. But again, I ask the question, is this a player that England, not Real Madrid, Real Madrid are serial winners. Is he the kind of player that England can depend on, come rain, come shine, come snow, and any time in between? Is this the player that will lift them beyond all of the expectations and get them past that wall that has held them back for so long from winning a competition? So, allow me to respond religiously in this manner so what's the definition of faith hmm. faith is the substance of things hoped for hmm. evidence of things not seen hmm. so if my question is can he be the talisman for the long run in england and i've watched him play for england and i can see the evidence i can see the substance hmm. and i can see the potential i mean the way he plays he plays like he's, he has been playing for years. And he's 20 years old. His composure on the ball, the way he receives the pass with both foot, left or right, depending on his position on the field of play, the way he lays on the pass, the way he runs with the ball, his mindset is almost like him to the brainer. Very direct. Gets the ball and he wants to run. He's looking for who to pass to. He's looking for who to open up the space. Those are evidence of a player that wants to Go the distance. We saw the same thing with Mbappe when he was 19 years old and he won the World Cup. Mm. He showed us it was not the flash of the pan and he did it again in fact to go to the final. That is Mbappe and France. So the potential is there, the substance is there. We will only be kidding ourselves if we say otherwise. Well, I wonder because the re I, I, if you remember very well, once upon a time, the generation of Paul Scholes, uh, Gerard, uh, Steven Gerard, uh, Frank Lampard, uh, David Beckham, these were all players that were considered part of the golden generation of English football. That generation never won anything and now we're at a new generation that is made up of Mason Mount who is struggling right now but a lot of people still think he can recapture what he has demonstrated in the early period of his uh, career. Also, we obviously no one disagrees that um, um, Phil Foden is a world-class talent in the making. Very soon, he might very well, and given that he's surrounded by a lot of quality in Man City, he will learn a lot. So a lot of people believe he is definitely going to be where they think uh, he will be able to make a difference for um, England on a game-by-game -game basis. But Jude Bellingham, do you think Jude Bellingham of this current generation is he the furthest along in his development? It's, the thing is, again, it's about the substance that we are seeing. Mm -hmm. And for the first time in a very long while, let me throw this question back to you. The golden generation you just reeled out. How many finals did they get to? Not many. The World Cup final or mm -hmm. the Euros final? How many did they get to? <laughs> None. The current one now, under uh, Gareth Southgate, 
They got to the semi final of the 2018 World Cup. They got to the final of the Euros. Mm. And they also qualified for another Euros, which, according to FIFA ranking, they are one of the best teams in Europe at the moment. Mm. I was discussing with a friend yesterday. I said, when you see a team with depth, you know. Mm. Yesterday, it was Jordan Pickford that was in goal for England. The previous game, I think was it against Australia or Scotland, it was Ramsdale. Another game, it was the Crystal Palace um, goalkeeper, John Stone. They have three goalkeepers that they can call on at any time. Look at the midfield. They have a mix of young stars and veterans. I was happy to see Henderson play yesterday. And he was playing beside um, Declan Rice. Mm. He's playing beside Calvin Phillips. You mentioned Phil Foden. There's Jude Bellingham. There's Rashford. There's Saka. Harry Kane, who is up front. Yes, he's one of their best strikers. But they still have other strikers coming through the ranks. There's Dominic Abadlouin. And even this guy that is currently banned, Ivan Tony, when he comes back, mm -hmm. his potential is not in doubt. So he's possibly going to play in the 2024 Euros with England. For the first time in a long while, I repeat, it's not just about the numbers or the names. It's about what they've actually done, where they've got into, and the depth they possess at the moment. Mm -hmm. It will only be anticlimactic if they don't do anything with it. All right. Um, if they don't do anything with it, obviously the questions will be asked of Gareth Southgate's ability to actually get these players to give their best on on the biggest stages, on the uh, most important nights. Um, but um, Gareth Southgate might very well not last beyond Euro 2024. We'll see uh, if he does. A lot of people. A lot of um, there. Obviously, a lot of better managers in the game than Gareth Southgate but um, perhaps none that England could get at the time when they did get uh, Gareth Southgate. Meanwhile... Yeah, I, I wanted to say mm. uh, a lot of people have proposed the female coach as well, Sigmund, mm. to take over if, if she's given the chance. Wigman, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I don't want to keep the genders separate when it comes to uh, management certainly there are plenty of male coaches managing in the female game but yeah they, but there aren't as many female managers and female head coaches in the female game as they are in the male game there's so many uh, managers and head coaches and just coaches fitness coaches physios that don't have a job because the the the, the number the wealth of, uh, uh, of bodies available in their respective jobs is just so many. Um, and there's still the issue of, oh, uh, there isn't enough room for non-white coaches to really show what they have, especially the black coaches, haven't really gotten the best of opportunities. That is a different question. And some, some will argue that competence also is a reason why a lot of black coaches haven't gotten the best opportunities. But when it comes to, um, because I remember when Gary Southgate was um, um, brought in to replace um, Hudson, Hud Hudson um, I believe it was, England was still going through the, that moment in its, in its uh, decision making about who should take over. Uh, re believing that it had to be uh, an English coach, um, they looked to. Yeah, that's the why I was proposing that even the female players and female coaches that were proposing are also English. Aside from Wakeman, Sardina Wakeman, there is also the Chelsea coach, mm. Emma Hayes. The, mm. the, the, the thing I would say is, football has evolved to the point where, regardless of your gender, you have access to the same technicalities. You have access to the same resources. So when you watch these coaches, I mean, I follow a lot of WSL. I watch Chelsea women a lot. I watch my women, women a lot and a lot of the tactics that go into the games. You can't say they can't replicate the same thing when a female coach represents the male well, team. I mean, we, we all watch the women's World Cup. Yeah. One of the things that was said, especially by the Super Falcons, where this was the first time in a long while that it was not about touch and follow. Hmm. It was all about tactics. So yeah. Be but, but but you know beyond the, uh, the tactical setup that any coach uh, or tactical philosophy that, that any coach wants to employ there is also the consideration of 
handling the different personalities within a team. And mm. even when you look at the men's game, one coach to coach, one big coach might not be capable of handling one set of egos. Look at uh, Pochettino. One of the things that they said he wasn't capable of doing at PSG was managing the big ego of uh, Neymar, the big ego of uh, uh, Kylian Mbappe, and the rest of the squad that was basically a squad of uh, Galacticos. And it was perhaps one of the reasons why he never ended up getting the job at Madrid. Um, you look at uh, Manchester United now, a lot of people, uh, uh, um, Ibramovic being one of them, has said that Eric Ten Hag isn't qualified to manage big egos. If you are playing at Manchester United, you become a player that believes you are a, a top tier, top rated player, and therefore your ego skyrockets. And certain managers aren't capable of handling that. Jose Mourinho famously said that Eric Ten Hag isn't good enough as a manager if he is unable to fit a player as good as Cristiano Ronaldo, even at 37, into his squad. So, again, my point is, when we talk about whether the female coach uh, for the women's team should take over for the men's coach, another consideration we should be thinking about is, are we not saying that if she's good enough, she, the fact that she's been asked to step into the men's team might just be considered a sense of promotion. She's been taken to a better job. Meanwhile, the female team, the women's team, is going to suffer for it, and therefore the women's team is considered less important. Just, just one of the things that should be considered if the decision does come down to keeping uh, Southgate and the only other option that the FA is considering is a Serena Wigman. But um, I, I don't know if you have something to say before we move yeah, on. Yeah, I actually do. See, again, we are, we are not considering some factors. Okay, so Serena Wigman that we're talking about, mm. look at the team she's managing, the English women's national team. Mm. Mary Epps, who is the goalkeeper, is no small fit. She's the goalkeeper for Manchester United women. Mm. Top choice at that matter. Um, Lauren James, we know what she is and her pedigree for, for Chelsea. And so on and so forth. Millie Bright is the captain of Chelsea women. Mm. These are players that she is managing. Mm. And Greenwood, Kelly, the name goes on and on and on. The same thing with Emma Hayes. Within the Chelsea hierarchy, there are a lot of players that are superstars. Samantha Kerr, the Australian captain, plays for Chelsea. And she manages her so well. Um, look at what is going on in the goalkeeping department between the German international um, Berger and um, Zetira Musovic, who is currently keeping for Chelsea. She's able to manage the ego between um, I, I think Berger, who was first choice, and Zetira Musovic, who just came in. And now Musovic has been keeping for Chelsea. Benga, Benga. Yes, there's no record in the dressing room. But Benga, let's not kid ourselves. The, the ego in the men's team is definitely not on the same level as the ego in a women's team, especially in a women's team that doesn't get paid as much, that doesn't get the same level of accommodation, same level of uh, financial resources and backing. Yes, for the sake of media, for the sake of, uh, um, for the sake of looking, appearing like they're being supported, campaigns can be put on TV to say the FA is doing its best, it's showing support. But every single day, managers get sat in the men's game because the men in the team decide to tools down, decide that they no longer want to follow this manager. Look at uh, uh, Emery back at Arsenal. Emery is arguably one of the top tier European managers in the game. And yet, he was being ridiculed by his own players. They were making fun of him in Arsenal uh, dressing room all ultimately led to his sacking. And I'm just saying, without trying to insinuate that there might be some sexism that might rear its ugly head if uh, Wigman were to take over the men's team, I am saying that these men, these egos in the men's teams all over the world do make it extremely difficult even for top tier male managers 
to really do the best work that they can do. And we've seen that some of the very best managers that do succeed when they take over a, 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 a club or a team that is full of egos, that those managers themselves have a reputation so big in the game that the players have no choice but to follow suit. I'm speaking of Zinedine Zidane. I'm speaking of Pep Guardiola. I'm speaking of Jose Mourinho. These managers are at the peak of management. Ancelotti, no one is going to disrespect Ancelotti even if they disagree with him. Whereas Wigman taking over the men's team, I think, and I keep saying this, if that is done, what they would be doing, what the, the FA would be insinuating would be that the women's team should be allowed to suffer by taking away the best coach it has ever had in its history in order to promote her to a job that they consider of a higher importance than the one she currently has with the female team. I'm just saying that is an image and a consideration that they must put into any decision that they ultimately take regarding if they replace uh, uh, Southgate with Wigman. But unfortunately, I know you probably have something more to say, but we need to finish up with uh, this story. Um, 